Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing our one year update for our Ninja Never Stick Pants. Did they hold up to a year of abuse or are they total crap? Find out now. So you ready? Let's get into this. Ninja has two different versions of their premium pants that have an aluminum base, a hard anodized finish, and a non-Teflon non-stick coating on the inside. That coating is advertised to be super hard and scratch resistant, and Ninja even says that you can use metal utensils on those. That's something I don't recommend doing at all, and we'll talk about that later. In addition to all that, there's a stainless steel plate attached to the bottom. When we originally got those pans, we tried sticking them in the dishwasher since they said they were dishwasher safe, and that stainless steel base got massively tarnished by putting them in there. Just a quick tip about pans, if you have anything that's got a magnetic base in it, then you're typically gonna have different types of metals in that base that make it magnetic. Those metals are gonna make it a lot more susceptible to corrosion and staining and all kinds of bad stuff. So just do yourself a favor and hand wash them. You'll thank me later. The other version of the Ninja Never Sticks have a stainless steel exterior. Now keep in mind these aren't stainless steel pans. The stainless on the outside is just a thin layer and it's there for decoration. But if you keep them clean, they look really sharp and they look really good hanging with a lot of other stainless steel pans. So those are the ones I kept and those are the ones we're gonna be doing our update on today. Keep in mind that the non-stick surface on the premium pans and the stainless pans are exactly the same. The only differences are cosmetic. Since we got a full set, we're gonna show you each of the pans and how they've held up and then we're gonna do a non-stick test on the one that's taken the most abuse. That's the only one we really need to test because if that one holds up, all the rest should hold up even better. Also, my set came with a whole bunch of these glass lids. I'm only gonna show you one because all of them look exactly like this and they all held up exactly the same. The lid is made out of glass. You got a stainless steel rim. There's no ventilation hole drilled in this, which is one of the things I really didn't like about these originally. And you got a stainless handle on this as well. You can see this thing still looks brand spanking new, but that's because we keep them really clean and honestly, we don't really use our lids all that much. All the handles are still nice and tight. We don't have any movement or warping on any of the rims and there's no cracking or splitting or anything like that. So as far as these go, absolutely nothing to complain about. Here's the first of our Ninja Never Stick stainless pans. These actually came in a 10 piece set. There were six pans and four lids. We've already talked about the lid. So now we're gonna talk about these pans in order of use. The least used pan first and the most used pan last. This is a six and a half quart stock pot. And like I said, it's got this stainless finish on it. This is mostly a decorative finish. It's still an aluminum pan with a non-stick layer in here. So these are actually pretty light. So they don't cook like real stainless steel pans do, but that's not why we have them. And we do have a set of stainless steels for that purpose. If you look around the exterior of this, the handles are on here really good. They don't move around at all. No loose rivets or anything like that. And if you look around the exterior of this pan, it's still nice and clean. No stains or anything like that. We do have one small scratch right here that was probably one of the other handles rubbing up against it somehow. If you look down at the bottom of this pan, you can see that the bottom of the pan ends and then you have a little bit of a line here and then you have a base attached to the bottom. This base down here is what makes the induction work because the pan other than that is an aluminum pan. So this bottom piece here is magnetic. You can see we do have a tiny bit of scratching around the edges here, which you'd sort of expect since that's the area that's gonna always rub against your cooktop. But really, we're talking about a year of use here. And granted, we don't use the stock pot a whole lot, but this thing is held up really well. You can also notice that you don't really see any crud forming in here along this line. That's one of the things I was really worried about when I got these because I kind of expected that to be a problem. Non-stick surface on this looks almost perfect actually. There's no scuffs or scratches anywhere on it. And I don't know how much you can tell by this video, but the color of the nonstick surface is nice and uniform all the way around it. Actually looks absolutely brand new. There are two little gashes here that I didn't notice before, but they don't really seem like they're too bad. Not even sure how those got on there, but really if that's it, that's not a problem. All right, next we have our one and a half quart saucepan. Same deal, no movement on the handle. The surface of the stainless looks really good. I got one little scrape right there. Not a big deal at all. If you look around there, not bad at all. The base looks nice and clean. Again, we got a little bit of rub here from where it touched the cooking surface, which I don't really know how you're gonna avoid that. Nothing in that gap right here, just like that last pan. And also again, that nonstick surface 
looks perfect on this one. This one actually looks better than the other one. There's no scratches, no gashes, no discoloration, no nothing really. This one looks absolutely brand new. Okay, next we have our two and a half quart saucepan. And now we're starting to get into stuff that gets used a lot more. Handle again, no problems. I'll tell you right now that I don't recall these handles being a problem at any one of these pans, but we're gonna go through them anyway, just in case. This looks really good. There's a little bit of scratching here that looks like more just from the polishing. There's some swirl marks in there. I really don't think you can see those on camera, but they are there. Kind of like when you wax your car and you can see those swirly marks on there. It's about what they look like. You got one, uh, I don't know, a little scratch there. Not a big deal. It's really it. Down the bottom, looks the same as the other ones. It's got that rubbing here like we were talking about. And the gap along the plate, that looks good too. Oh, there's a little scratch right there. If we're taking a look at the non-stick surface on this, I got one little gash right there. You can feel a little bit of a rise to it there, but uh, that's really it. Actually, we got that. We got a little scratch right here and a little scratch right there. So it kind of looks like a fork scraped on there or something like that. Couldn't notice that unless I just got it just in the right light here. So, so I'd say that's kind of a win. Okay, now we're gonna start getting into our much higher use pans here. This is my eight inch fry pan. Handle still feels good. You can see quite a bit of little scratches here in the handle. I don't know if that's a big deal to you or not. I mean, a certain amount of this stuff is gonna happen just by owning stuff, but definitely it's there. As far as scratches go, if we go around the surface here, Got some scratches there, a couple little dings there. Looks like it got contact with something right there. And we have a little scratch right here as well. If you look down at the base, we got a tiny bit of discoloration here in the middle and that's probably just because I haven't really cleaned this as good as I could. Just like a little bit of staining here on the side, but a little bit of barkeeper's friend will probably get that out. Now on this, if you look at the base plate and you follow this around, you're gonna start to see a little bit of discoloration here where they come together. And this is the kind of thing I was thinking could be an issue with these. It's not really bad on this pan and you probably won't really notice it all that much, but there is that little bit of discoloration right in that seam where they connect. It's deep enough in there to where you can't really polish that out either, so it's there. All right, now if we look at the non-stick surface on this, it looks really good. There's no chunks or scratches in it at all. You can see here, it's browning a little bit. So we got some brown splotches over here, a little bit more brown here, and all the way around the sides here, it's still that dark gray charcoal color that you get whenever these are brand new. Even with that discoloration, there's no signs of bubbling or flaking or any of the other things that I've heard people complain about on these. All right, we got two pans left. This is our 10 and a quarter inch fry pan. This one gets heavy use. This is used almost every day. Handles good, you look at the bottom, we definitely got some scraping here. There's some right there, more right there, a little bit more right over there. And then coming around the side, there's all kinds of little dinks and dunks on this. They're just scratches and abrasions. They don't go very deep, but they're there. If you look at the base of the pan, we got quite a bit of abrasion right around the outsides here. But for the most part, it looks pretty darn good for the amount of use we got. If you look at where this bottom plate connects to the rest of the pan, here you can start seeing a lot more of what I was talking about. You got a lot of discoloration right in this seam here that you're not really gonna be able to do anything about. It's annoying that I can't clean that because I'm pretty anal about keeping my pans clean. So that bothers me a little bit, but I mean, it's not terrible. Now, if you look at the nonstick surface of this pan, now you're gonna see some differences here. This entire section right here is more of a sort of an auburn color. All the outsides all the way around right here are still the original non-stick color though. You can see a definite difference in a ring that starts right there. And this entire base is faded out. If you run your hand across this, the surface still feels pretty consistent, albeit the actual non-stick surface feels a little bit more on the rough side. And this down here feels a lot smoother than it did when it was brand new, which is kind of funny because normally with a non-stick pan, you're figuring on the surface being really smooth, but the Ninja never sticks are a little bit different. Anyway, no flaking, no bubbling, just discoloration. If I turn the sideways, you can see a lot of scratches in here all over the place. I'm trying to get it just right so you can see them. They're there and that's 
Probably my wife using a fork on this thing or something. Either that or I suspect she's probably using our stainless steel spatula on this or something like that. Whatever it is, it's whatever it is, it's scratching the surface up a little bit, but really it's not super bad. Just gonna show you, just because somebody says you can use metal utensils on stuff, doesn't mean you really should. All right, the last pan in our set is our three quart saute pan. This by far gets the most use in my set. This is probably used, I don't know, two or three times a day. So this is the pan that we're gonna be testing our nonstick surface on. Again, handle's nice and solid, rivets are on there tight. If we look at the surface here, we got scratches all the way around the side here. How that happens, I have no clue because it doesn't bump up against anything, but it's scratched all the way around. Rubs, swirls, all sorts of stuff. If I'm looking at the plate on the bottom, it looks pretty good. Quite a few scratches on it, but ironically, not as many scratches on the base as there are on the sides, so I don't know how that happened, but it is what it is, I guess. If you look at that line between the base and the side of the pan, this has got this coloration all in it all the way around, and I did what I could to get it out, and it did not help, so that's pretty permanent. When we look at our nonstick surface, again, the sides of the pan are perfect. And you'd expect those to be perfect because they don't make a whole lot of contact with your food. But if you look at the base, the entire surface on the bottom is that auburn color. In fact, if you're looking at the side of your pan, you can see right in the corner here where it changes color all the way around the pan. In fact, if I'm looking at it at just the right angle, I can see a circle of brown, 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 brown over here, and then some more brown over there. So it kind of looks like the patches of hair on the top of my head, just saying. Anyway, we got a deep little gash right there scratches more scratches around here more up here looks like somebody tried to stab this thing with a fork or a knife or something a bunch of times so definitely we got some gashes all over the place on the surface of this again probably from using metal utensils the good thing is once again there's no bubbling there's no flaking off of any of the nonstick surface. None of the things that a lot of people complain about with nonstick pans. And also, none of the things that I've seen people complain about with these particular pans. Namely, the flaking and the bubbling. All right, so what we're gonna do to test this out is we're gonna fry two eggs in here. We're not gonna use any butter. We're not gonna use any oil. We're gonna fry them straight on the surface without giving them any help at all. So what we need to do is preheat this pan at about a medium low or so. One thing that people don't realize is that even with a non-stick pan, you still should preheat it anyway. Most of the time if you put something into a pan cold, even if it's non-stick, it's still gonna stick anyway. So we'll give this a few minutes to heat up and then we'll continue. Two hours later. All right, now that that's preheated, Let's put these eggs in here, shall we? And now all we gotta do is wait. By the way, if this is your first time here and you wanna learn some cool new recipes, get some great cooking tips and tricks and all sorts of other kitchen related things, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. All right, that looks like they're just about done. Let's see if these are sticking. You can see these are just coming off just like that. Let's see if I can just get these off in one piece without breaking these. In fact, these just slide right off onto the plate. I said over easy! Not too bad, huh? Nice color on the bottom. And no sticking whatsoever. If you look at the surface of the pan here, there's absolutely nothing stuck to it either. So I'd say these are doing pretty damn good. But what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. So after about a year of heavy use, I'm happy to say that the Ninja Neverstick pans are still holding up really well. Your mileage might vary a little bit, but it really depends on how you take care of your pans. I don't use metal utensils, even though it says you can. I never put them in the dishwasher, even though it says you can do that too. I don't overheat them, I try to keep them really clean. And the most important thing in my case is that I never slam them into a drawer, I always hang them from a pot rack. If you don't have any space and you gotta put them in a drawer, I recommend making sure you're not stacking them on top of each other. With just those few simple tips, you should get pretty comparable results to what I experienced. If you'd like a little bit more information about Ninja Never Stick Pans, I do have an Amazon affiliate link to them down in the description of the video. If you buy anything through those links, we do make a small commission, but it doesn't change the price that you pay one cent. 
If you like this video, you might like this video right here where we reviewed the Ninja Everclad stainless steel pans. We've been using those in our kitchen for a few months and so far they've performed really well. Well, that's it for now. I hope to see you back again here really soon. And until that time, I'm Joe and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.